So now that we completed the statistics, our next iteration is enhancements. And in particular to the enhancement, we want to uh, be able to enable or disable the uh, user buttons uh, to only the times uh, when they are needed. So we want uh, we don't want the user to click on them if uh, they don't need to do that at any time. So now we move to uh, this is our iteration number six and the problem formulation. So to define the scope, uh, we'll mean that uh, change the status of the start game button to be enabled only when a game is not played. The second scope is to do the same the enabled status for the notes buttons for the notes buttons uh, to only when the user need to give an answer. And in the testing, repeat testing scenarios and uh, check if uh, buttons are enabled. We go to the solution formulation. And we have the model. And in the model here, uh, we do have to access the actual button, so we have to model them. And we have the start game button. So this will be a UI button. And, um, and this is a library class. So we can learn about the UI library, uh, UI button library, and see if it has a, 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 an attribute called enable that we can set to true or false. Then we have the notes buttons. We have 12 of these. We can deal with them individually, like we're going to do with the start game, or we can recognize that they are all of the same type, and what we want to do is the same for each and every one of them. So we can then model them all as a collection of button instead of one individual button. Or an NS array of buttons. So coming to the view, um, no change to the view here other than uh, we need to connect all the buttons as outlets, connect the start game as outlet, and the buttons col collection, the notes, uh, as outlet. In the controller, that needs some thinking. So the controller, <coughs> you have multiple things. You have view did load, you have the start game, you have the play game, you have the check answer, and you have the reset turn and the reset game. So nothing here in the view did load. Uh, in fact, actually in the view did load, we need to disable all the buttons, the node buttons, so that the only one available is the start game. When the user click start game, we need to disable the start game button. When the play game is done, we need to enable the note buttons. When the user checks the answer, once they click on one of the buttons, then we need to disable the note buttons. And 
when the play game, when the game is over, so this is uh, during the game, when game is over, we will need to enable the start game. Nothing need to happen in the reset, or at least how I think. Uh, I'm I'm in abstract thinking, so I may be able to envision all of it. Or maybe even at this time you can. So you'll just go through one by one, and then explore um, as you uh, as you continue. Then the last step is the solution implementation. And the first step here is to connect start game as uh, uh, connect the start game as outlet and connect the node buttons as collection of outlets. You probably have noticed that there is this option but we never used it before so this is the first time we're going to use it. Then uh, um, add the the functions in the each and every one of the uh, above. So I can just um, say just follow what's in here in the control. So let's go ahead and try and see what this will uh, will allow us to do. So we go to the storyboard and now we back to the main view and I need the assistant editor for this one. Maybe make some room here. So first the start game. So we'll connect to the start game as an outlet so this will be an outlet and I'm gonna call it button start game then I uh, will connect each and every one of those and I can connect them as a button or I can make this outlet collection which will create a collection of type UI button and then I will call it button notes collection or button notes that this is all uh, but this will mean like one button I wanted to uh, make sure that it, you, you understand this is a collection so this is a collection of buttons so this type here uh, the the square brackets indicates that you have more than one which is the initial the way to initialize uh, an array so this is basically meaning that we're creating an array of UI buttons. Um, we'll need to, it's currently connected to one button, uh, so we'll need to connect all of them to that collection. So connect to an outlet collection like that. So all of them need to be connected to that outlet collection. And you can connect it from here, like the same thing we did with the functions in the help screen. So uh, now that we connect all the buttons and we have outlets for all of them and an outlet for the start game, uh, let's go ahead and, um, uh, no, I want it, oops. And I switch to the view controller. And the first thing is the start game. And no, first thing is the view did load for, let, let's take the start game button first. So the start game button by in the beginning is enabled. It only goes disabled when the user clicks start game. So I come here in the start game and say disable the start game button. So I'll say button start game dot enabled and then we set this enabled to false. So now the button is not enabled. Then I go, when the game is over, when the game, oops, it's in play game, when the game is over, uh, and when the alert shows or update the stats, uh, we can uh, say here, enable the start game. So I say button start game dot enable equal to. Let's try that before we play with the others.
So click start game. Now here you see the gray, it, it color different. You try to click on it anymore, it's not initializing. Let's see if, if it will do that at the end. So now the end the game, you notice that the start game became active again. So you can now play another game. So now we need to do this for all of these buttons and we're going to do it in multiple places. And when we have the buttons as a collection like that, uh, we uh, how do we access each individual uh, one or each individual button in here? Uh, we can uh, will introduce a new um, uh, control statement similar to the if statement that will allow us to loop through and iterate through um, the collection of buttons. So let's let's do that in a function by itself. Since we're gonna need to do this, um, as you can see uh, here, uh, we're gonna need to do it in the viewed load. Then we need to do it in the play game. Then we need to do it in the check answer. So it's better to make it a, a function by itself. So I'll come here all the way to the end and add a function to change uh, button status. Now this this function to change the button the status of the buttons. Uh, probably I should call it change note buttons status. Um, I can turn it on and off. If you uh, recall all what I needed to change in the play game for the start button is a true or false. So that's the value I need. So I can say if you give me the value you want, so we'll kind of call it a status as a boolean. If whoever calls this function passes to it that what they want, they want to true, they want false, then we can use that status to switch the buttons to true or false. So how, how are we going to access each and every one of them? So you have the buttons uh, and it is a, an initialized as a collection with a square bracket. We can use that. So I can say button notes collection and I can use the square bracket and use the index. Remember the array was an index. So I can use zero dot enabled and I'll say equal status. And then write that 12 times. This is also an array, so I can use, uh, it's not an NS array, it's an array uh, index, so it doesn't have object at, uh, as index, but it have this, uh, the index operator that will allow us to go from one to the other and, uh, and so on. So I can repeat that, or you can notice that this is going from zero all the way to 12, which is how many they are, and I can then access that with, if I can repeat this uh, notion, so I can say, if I can do button collection, and instead of using 0, 1, and 2, use maybe a variable i, and then set the enabled to status, can I change this value of variable i, so I can use a for the statement, uh, that will initialize a variable i, so I can say i as an integer, uh, followed by i less than the notes, uh, the button notes collection dot count. Let's uh, change that. It's uh, probably not cooperating because I. I structured it differently. Uh, so let's do that again. And so the for loop will have an initializer. So we'll say i is 0. And then i is less than the button node collections that count. And then the i will increment by 1. What this will do is it will. Uh, allow you to change the i 
You can say this is an integer. So we can come here and say, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's what's missing. So you can do something like this, which means the for loop will create a loop. So far, every instruction that we have can be executed only once. The if statement gave us the opportunity to decide or to make a decision whether an instruction can be executed or skipped. The for loop allow us to repeat an instruction more than one time. So this for loop, instead of repeating the instruction 12 times here, if I follow this method, I can write the instruction only once and include it in a for loop block. This block will be repeated as long as this condition is true. So there are three statements with the for loop separated by a semicolon. The first one is an initial value. It's a counter. So you're setting up a counter named i that changes value that starts with value 0. Then this counter, you compare it with the count of all the collections that you have. And then finally, you increment the counter. And remember the plus plus, which basically means i equal i plus 1. And so the i will be taking here value 0, which is this, value 1, value 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way till all of them uh, are done. So now I no longer need these two, and I have my function that initialize or that can change the enabled status to whatever value you provide for it. This is called a utility function. or helper function. It is not really related to an event and it is allowing us to to take a, 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 fun, a, a feature or an instruction that will be repeated more than one time and will be used by more than one other functions and separate it and, and make it easy for the other functions to use it and also make it easy for us to change it if we ever think we need to change it. So now we back here and say that in the view did load we need to disable the buttons which now means I need to call this function and send it a false. So I go to the view did load and say uh, disable disable the uh, notes buttons. So instead of doing it myself I can say change node buttons status and give it a false. Then the next step is in the play game, once the sound is played, I need to enable it. So I go to play game and um, I and right after I make the log or before because I'm going to delete that log. And then enable the notes buttons. So I'll say change note status and now I send the true. I think I need to change this to the boolean. Yeah, it is the same. Sorry. So here it is true, and then when you check the answer, when the user selects one of them, then I need, before I do anything, I need to disable all the buttons. Disable the buttons. So I'll say change the status, and then it's a false again. So that's basically all the steps here. So let's try. 
So we start, all of them are disabled. The user cannot check or click on any of them. They can only click on the start game, status or help. So you click on the start game. Now we heard the sound. The start game is disabled. You can choose an answer. And once you choose an answer, they are all disabled. You see the results and another sound is played so they are enabled. You see now they are disabled. You can select again. And then I actually select it before it came, comes back. If, if you need more duration, you can change the time. And then when, when the game is over, you come back and um, we are back to the same status again and a new game can be played. So that is the uh, uh, the uh, the game, and there are things that you can do. So, for instance, uh, it played the note, and I um, didn't hear it well. So I want to play it again. Is there a way you can add a button here that maybe plays the note again? Um, that will be a good extra credit for you to do. Uh, add a button to play uh, a note. Um, another thing you can do is you can use uh, uh, a timer to uh, to time how how long it took the user to uh, to respond to or to make an answer and then maybe use that as part of your uh, scoring so that's all for this project I hope you enjoyed it this is uh, uh, there is a lot that we introduced here uh, we 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 use the if statement a lot more uh, to make selections, we introduced the for statement to do repeats. Uh, we explored an array of components uh, and, and the, the functions. We introduced animations. Uh, we introduced the NS timer, um, the audio player. Uh, you have a full application with multiple states that you can build on and make something useful. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoy it and um, up to our next module.